and our wizard and our monk are not ready to train yet. As your level increases, you can of course learn new spells if you're spellcasters. Sometimes it's hard to choose. This time this person gets two spells. You can actually wait if you want and learn more as you increase in level as better spells come along. But a lot of times it's hard to wait. You just find yourself always wanting to increase. There you'll notice that I just heard some monsters and I was able to surprise them. And that's because of the listen skill. And when you surprise enemies, you get free shots at them for one whole round. So here we're fighting two vipers and we're just going to wail on them while they can't do anything. Now you'll notice I have an attack ability now instead of just thrust. Attack allows fighters to attack more than once. Here we just discovered a trap and disarmed it, again thanks to thieving skills. Monks can also do lots of thieving type things. A monk is kind of like the jack of all trades. They're not a master of anything, but they are very well rounded. Sometimes throughout the map you go to special events and copy protection asks you to answer a question in order to make sure you haven't pirated the game. So here we meet an old sage and he just basically tells us to go somewhere, do something, and come back. So speaking of which, we're going to adventure on the map now. And you'll notice we're swimming across water, even though it looks like space, and we are taking damage. A much friendlier way is once you get the transportation spell, you go to a town and you cast it, it'll teleport you to any town on the map. So here we just transported to Scanport and we can go look at their armory now. And this is much better equipment. I'm going to buy up this ring mail. 52 gold pieces. It absorbs 5 damage. And when I buy it, you'll notice it disappears from the store, which is very cool. So you can't just have an infinite supply of anything in the game. So now is the point where I'm going to actually redistribute all my items. There's not a way to really transfer items in the game, so you have to redistribute everything. So I'm going to give this ring mill to my fighter, and I have one robes left, which I just sold. Just be careful once you get the transportation spell that you don't get a big head on your shoulders, because you can end up in a very, very dangerous area of the game. Like here I'm going into this tent, and I only have basically level 3 characters, and look what I'm attacking. Two viper moths and four high demons. Well, let's see how this goes over. Sixty damage. Okay, I think I'm pretty much screwed. You'll notice Zar just parried automatically. The reason is because his right arm got broken. Anytime a character's right arm gets broken, they're not allowed to do any type of attack. They can cast spells or parry. So now that our party was destroyed, what happens is we're taken to the astral plane and we're judged. Each character is judged. If you pass judgment, you become undead, otherwise your character is destroyed. And when it's destroyed, it's permanently gone. Of course, you can reload the game, but if you don't, the character is gone out of the roster and you can't get them back. Now, if they are converted to undead, what happens is when you inspect them, it shows them as a level 20 character, but in reality, they're not. They're forever stuck at whatever level and abilities you had at the time you died. Kind of like the event horizon on a black hole. So now I'm just going to talk about a few other random things throughout the game. You'll notice there was just an inn that I could have stayed at. You'll find those dispersed throughout the game and it costs you money to stay at an inn when it's on the map. Here we ran across some baby dragons and you might think it's pretty cruel to be attacking baby dragons but let me assure you that when you try to always greet them sometimes they won't do it. So it's their own damn fault if they get killed. 
So here I took these three dragons out and I got a pretty good amount of experience and the treasure I got is very nice. Look at this statue, it's worth 1,071 gold. Club plus one, 2,800 gold for a piece of junk. But it's a plus one weapon, which is why it's so expensive, especially being a club, since any character can use it. Another really cool thing is that the developers actually took the time to figure out what type of monster you're fighting to see if it actually had bones and things of that nature. Like take this constrictor, for example. You can only injure it. You can't break anything on it. Or you'll notice his body just keeps getting injured. That's a really cool feature that they put in the game. Now that we're more advanced, let's just show leveling up of some of our characters again. Here our wizard just leveled up. And there isn't a whole lot to choose from as far as skills for the wizard, since they're so spell-based. But look at this, four spells. Fire Flash 4, which is one of the best spells in the game. Flame Bolt 1, we're finally starting to get those. Flame Bolt's a type of spell that hits every single enemy in combat. Armor reduces it. Here our monk just cost 5,600 gold to increase to, to the next level. But look at this, 16 hit points. That's huge. And you'll notice that his skills are very well rounded as I was describing earlier. Nothing can increase by a huge amount but overall he's pretty well skilled in everything and for some reason enemies really hate monks they will always target them first so here they can learn fire flash 3 and ninja 2 ninja is a really awesome skill it allows your character to just go haywire and take out everything here's an example of finding a horde in a dungeon all kinds of things were in this treasure chest Now I'm just going to start walking through some random encounters. Here we're fighting two dragon kings. These suckers are pretty darn tough. You'll notice they just got two attacks. They have special abilities too. Like here it just breathe fire on us. Now certain spells like fire flash bypass armor which is fantastic for taking out things like this a spell like flame bolt does not bypass armor mind blast does so basically you have to figure out which spells bypass armor and use those to the best of your advantage when a situation like this applies Okay, so we just got 7,800 experience and found a diamond and a painting. Those paintings are worth 8,000 and the diamond's 4,000. Here we're fighting a vampire. And since it's at night and the party's asleep, only one of our characters is awake. So I'm just going to try to cast some fire flash on it. You'll notice it just drained my wizard. Draining isn't the typical Dungeons and Dragons draining where it drains a whole level, thank goodness. It just drains your magic points. Now that was kind of weird. We just got chain mail from fighting a vampire. Oh well, each game has its own quirkiness. Now I'm going to leave you to enjoy this epic battle between these high demons and my higher level characters. I'm just going to show you what can happen when it seems that all is lost, but you use the spell Summon Elemental especially if you have an air elemental on your side. I just lost my monk who has the ability to cast summon elemental. I just tried to spell undead, did nothing to these things. So what I'm going to show you next is that you can actually resurrect a character during battle, which was unheard of in a game of this time. If you play the gold box editions of Dungeons and Dragons, you can't do such a thing. If you try to do it, it may say that they resurrect,